Welcome to Europe's youngest country, the Republic of Kosovo. Kosovo declared its independence from Serbia in 2008. So at 14 years old, it is the youngest country in Europe. We're gonna explore its capital, Pristina, see if it's worth visiting, is it expensive, what we can find, and we'll share some history along the way. If you need a good pantsuit, next to Bill Clinton's statue, come to Hillary. So why is there a statue of Bill Clinton in the capital of Kosovo? In 1998, there was a war. Kosovo was part of Serbia and a war broke out. Kosovo is inhabited by ethnic Albanians and ethnic tensions arose similar to other, re other regions of the Balkans after in the late 90s. NATO intervened, ended up bombing Belgrade and Kosovo has been autonomous until it declared independence in 2008. So the Kosovar people view Bill Clinton and the NATO intervention as a sign of freedom and independence. And there's still a large NATO peacekeeping force here, uh, something around 10,000 soldiers. And as of recently, in July, right now it's the beginning of August, uh, Serbia closed the border it shares with Kosovo because there's tensions going on in other cities. So let's try and find some locals we can talk to and kind of learn more about what's going on in this very unique piece of land in the heart of the Balkans. The city is so alive, bustling. They're building things everywhere. And look at this, they have a Burger King drive-thru. Nothing more fitting to honor the youngest country than a newborn monument. Crossing the street here is no joke. In almost every other Balkan country, you like walk in, they just stop. Here it's like, oh, they go right in front of you, they go right behind you. Yeah, you've almost died a couple times. I almost got hit by a bus. RKS, Republic Kosovo, and it has the flag and... While Kosovo is not universally recognized by all the UN member states, I think it's around slightly more than half recognize Kosovo's independence. But you'll see, sometimes you'll see license plates that are covered up, and those are usually Serbian license plates. So if someone's coming with a Serbian license plate, they'll cover up the part that says SRB and then the seal. And I think that kind of says, you know, the, the feeling between these two people, the animosity and the tension. This is a pretty interesting one. So it's socialist because Kosovo was part of Serbia and part of Yugoslavia. You have this old socialist monument and surrounded by construction. Look, new buildings there, new buildings there. They're building more apartment buildings over there. Kosovo has the youngest population in Europe. With 70, over 70% 70 of the population is under 35 years old. Look, there's trash. So much trash. Trash everywhere. Pile of water bottles. Graffiti everywhere. There's broken glass all over the ground. I wonder if, because this was Yugoslav, they like don't care about it. Yeah, but right over there one of the old presidents is buried and that looks way nicer than this so if you're from kosova let us know what are your opinions on this monument its significance were we right were we wrong someone just got drunk and didn't know what to do with their pump and left it here imagine getting it up the but hill yeah. is it like a inside joke that we're not understanding. You guys heard it here first, the cheapest gas in Kosovo. Basically free. Like the other Balkan countries, this tension comes into play because this whole area of Kosovo has generally been inhabited by ethnic Albanians. And going back in Serbian history, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is from what I've read and this is from what I understand, uh, Serbs generally consider Kosovo to be the birthplace of the Serbian nation. So that's why there's so much tension here. 
And of course, Serbia doesn't want Kosovo to be independent. It considers Kosovo part of Serbia, but the people here have a much different opinion. And there's other cities where there still are Serbs living here. Triple locked. Satellite dishes. Look at this. What is this? This looks like something straight out of 1984 or some kind of dystopian. It's like they just covered the whole building in barbed wire. It looks cooler from far away. And then when you get closer, yeah, I, I don't really understand it. Not only do you have the entire building covered in a metal net, but you have these like white domed skylight type things just on top of the entire building. What do you think? Is this the ugliest building in the world? If you know uglier ones, leave a comment, let us know. Since it is a library, I imagine this would be like a library in the Soviet Union where information was so tightly controlled yeah. or a library in North Korea where, yeah, it's there, but it's completely like locked down. All the doors are covered in like metal bars. It's all the information, all the freedoms inside, but the average citizen just can't even get, you can see it. You can almost touch it, but you just, you just can't. You're so close. Or it's just a building that's not inviting. So yeah, you know it's there. You just don't want to go in. Yeah, it's kind of scary looking. Looks like it'd be the headquarters of a League of Evil. All right, let's try and go inside. This seems so fitting. This lock and chain. The domes look much nicer from the inside. And the inside's pretty nice. I don't know who, uh, who got the okay on the outside part, but the inside's nice. Something we've noticed while walking around is that there haven't been many buses. Seems like there's always traffic and a lot of people are driving. So is it common for people to own their own cars instead of taking public transportation? Let us know. Okay, we didn't see them when we were walking through the suburbs, so maybe it's busy streets where they are, but I swear that's the most buses I've seen. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of viewpoints. But I am. Also, if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know I don't like heights. But Haley doesn't really care about that. I do, it's just good for you and you'll have so much fun at the top. So there's the library. Okay, the view's really nice, but I really hate being up this high. Yeah, I hate it so much. Yesterday, after we ended the video, we went out looking for something to eat and got caught in this rainstorm. And there's this woman next to us and she has a cat and a backpack. We say, oh, the cat's really cute. She responded in perfect English. And so it's just pouring rain and we just kept talking. Turns out that she's from here, moved to the USA during the Kosovo war in the late nineties and just recently moved back a few years ago. So yesterday we made plans with her to meet up today. We're gonna get coffee with her. I don't know if she's gonna wanna be on camera. We're hoping so. We have a few questions about Kosovo that we would love to ask her. Hopefully she'll let us film. Well, hi, my name is Barba Godolci and I am an um, American. 
American citizen that lives in Pristina. <laughs> I was born here, I was raised in New York. The country is full of young people, it's Europe's youngest country, yes. but many people are leaving. Um, Yes, as I previously said, like uh, this is a place where they have a lot of young generation and everything. But unfortunately, because of the economic situation, a lot of them end up leaving the country just to get a better life anywhere, like outside of Kosovo, I would say. Uh, mostly in European or sometimes the United States if they can, but the United States is harder to get to. But they try to get to the European countries by believing that they can get a better life. Yeah. I'm not saying that they don't have opportunities in here. They do have good opportunities, but they are it's more difficult yeah. to find one. As I said, for me, I was raised in New York and I came back. I'm okay. I was able to find a stable job. I was able to get an okay income compared, like, uh, compared to Americans' income. Yeah. Now that's great, but living in in here, uh, the income that I have, it's pretty good. And also, like, I want to finish the, the goals that I came here for. Uh, so for me, I'm okay. But some of the people, like, they finish school and they contribute a lot, and yeah. then they cannot find like a good job. It's harder for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're losing a, a, a lot of young generation. But this is also due to like high corruption, and it's a new country. Like governments are still building, they're not as great as they should be. Yeah. Uh, the freedom, yes, the freedom is great, awesome that we got the freedom because previously we had problems with um, all the conflicts that were going on, which I don't want to go back into it because it's a long story. Uh, but yeah, people appreciate, as I said, the freedom, the love of the country and the nation and everything, but sometimes they just get fired because yeah. they cannot live over it. Has life gotten better in Kosovo since 2008? Because 2008 is when Kosovo declared independence, right? In some aspects, yes. Like meaning, like uh, education part, yes. Yeah. Now we have opportunities, like you can go to school where uh, you can get like international degrees. They have a lot of international schools in here. It's youngest <laughs> by like age of the country, and it's also youngest by demographic, right? Yes. In terms of the people living here. Double whammy. Yes. Yeah. Double. <laughs> Fourteen. You're still growing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give yeah. us time. <laughs> if someone was watching this and I guess they didn't know much about Kosovo or they were interested in coming here, I mean, what would you what would you say to them? Should people come visit? I would highly suggest for you guys, whoever watches this, to come and visit because you won't be disappointed. And also, like. Uh, Food is delicious, <laughs> uh, cafes are good in here, so people are friendly as I said, so you, I don't think so you'll be disappointed if you come and visit for at least a couple of days. Yeah. Did Kosovo always, did they want to become independent or at one point were you guys like wanting to join Albania or was it, like was there a referendum to be like, we're not going to join Albania so this is how Kosovo came to be or? Do you know any history well, on that? <laughs> well, uh, Seoul was always a country mm -hmm. which was a majority like were Albanians, mm -hmm. but fortunately because of the history, like the rights were taken away, um, and we were kind of like forced to be under a regime mm -hmm. which we weren't happy with. So, in to begin, so in other words, like to make it short. Like, yeah, we always wanted to be a country. Okay. Uh, our point wasn't to be with Albania. Okay. To be united, but we always wanted our freedom. Yeah. Just to be, to be able to live a happy life like everybody else. Have the main, like, basic freedom. Yeah. So you could go at least to school, go to work without being afraid that someone may end up, like, putting you to jail or killing you or you name it. Okay. Just because you're trying to survive yeah. on your own country. Yeah. Okay. We don't mind. We are very united. Like. Our services living here, our Turkish bosses. We yeah. don't, we don't really like uh, separate anybody. There are also internationals in here that live now, yeah. and uh, we are very friendly. As I said, very friendly in all the ways. Like yeah. we don't really like, uh, we don't separate by religion, and race, or anything like that. Uh, and we never, actually, technically, we never did. But unfortunately, what we went through was something that we needed to get out. Of. In order to survive, yeah. so I don't think so. It was a point to be united with Albania, which is a point. Oh, Have the basic freedom. Yeah. yeah. Okay.